prior to ever having gone to Los Angeles, pretty much my entire opinion of what that city was had been seen through the eyes of the hills. And so for a good year of going there for meetings and stuff, my American friends would have to be like, mate, we're not going to Le Do or the Le, 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 whatever they're called, those clubs. And I was like, please, please. I didn't have any awareness of the royal family when I was growing up. It's not something we all wake up and kind of salute, you know. Um, we don't raise a flag every morning. I really love sad things. I love sad music. Even though I, I, don't, I've, I'm, I have a very happy life, but I'm drawn to, I'm drawn to those things in, 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 uh, in art. First movie I remember seeing was possibly Fight Club. I mean, I probably didn't, you know, really sort of take in really what it was all about at first time I saw it, because I was just interested in all the fighting and blood and, and what have you. And... First movie I remember seeing was a Disney version of Robin Hood uh, with foxes. And I remember falling slightly in love with the fox playing Maid Marian, which is uh, slightly worrying, but it's been a trend that's continued throughout my life. <laughs> In the, I also had a bit of a crush on Nala in The Lion King, so, uh, um, yeah, cartoons and I get on well. The first movie I remember seeing is probably um, Oliver, the musical. Um, and I remember that I used to act out the characters, particularly Fagin. Um, and I also really remember loving the moment... <laughs> when um, Nancy gets murdered, um, for some reason. As a kid, I, my first job was um, in Oliver, a musical. If you're born in England and you um, are in any way interested in the theatre, at some point you've either played a policeman or Dodger or Nancy. I was workhouse boy number 36, forward slash the book boy. And I had one line, which was, Books you order from the bookseller, sir! And I delivered it with great panache. I didn't even make it into the gang. I didn't even make it into the gang. And for a long time, it remained on my CV. Uh, it's probably still on there, because it's like Sam Mendes directed me. <laughs> in, in all, I don't think I even ever met Sam Mendes when I was doing it. First movie um, I auditioned for was called <clears throat> Tom and Thomas. And it was kind of bizarre, because... I was playing twins. I was ten years old. It was the first film I went up for, and yeah, I got I got the part. Uh, I, I think it was probably the Libertine, yeah, um, which I, which I got, and uh, that was in um, when I was still at, at college. I had to leave school to do it. The offset uh, world of that film was probably more debauched than the onset one. That's for sure. We used to make up our own plays. We used to um, devise our own pieces. We did a version of Hamlet and I played Hamlet. That was when I was about 16 by then. I think there's something about that play that really speaks to 16 year olds, 16 year old boys probably anyway. I started acting when I was six. I did a play called All My Sons, Arthur Miller played, played Son of Macduff when I was uh, in, in Macbeth um, when I was about eight. I sort of had a bit of a late education in film so it didn't really start which I did for myself, but probably not until I left drama school. So, and then I started watching, you know, Marlon Brando and um, the, the, those great people. I, I, I really love Jimmy Stewart. I love him in Vertigo. He's so clear. He's he's so um, transparent. I think he's absolutely beautiful actor. Do you know, there's one film that blew my mind and made me almost want to give up acting, which was Glen Gary, Glen Ross. We've got this kind of extraordinary um, selection of actors who are sort of nailing out the park, uh, hitting, nailing it out the park, hitting it out the park, <laughs> so so severely that um, that it was like, is it really worth continuing when you see acting of that quality? I mean, fairly typical. Brando was a massive thing, you know. Seeing Streetcar Named Desire was was very uh, sort of seminal experience for me. It was one of my mum's favourite films, and she had an old VHS tape of it, and. Uh, I saw it and then started to get obsessed with Elia Kazan and uh, the play in Tennessee Williams and that whole world, you know. I didn't even really consider myself a movie star. I don't know what I, what I am. Um, you realise that some of the things that you are feeling as a person, they can be 
um, used for something, um, for something bigger than yourself, um, for, and you can express yourself, but through someone else's words. I suppose that kind of thing struck me very strongly.